time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live. Let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live, Wednesday, August 14th. Hope everybody's having a good day. Pretty calm price action, especially for a CPI days. Must have uh, kind of got it out of it, the movement out of its system after PPI. S&P is up 15. NASDAQ is down 26. Russell down 14. Dow up 257. Gold and silver, both red to the tune of a little under 1%. Notes and bonds, green, 10-year yield down about three quarters of a percent. Oil down one and a half percent. Natural gas up three and a half. Grains all green. Euro a little bit green. Pound a little bit red. Bitcoin down three and a quarter percent. VIX down another nine percent, 16.47. Oh, the days of 65 VIX just a few days ago. Um, so I've got a, I just did two, I've just done two price action trades today. I didn't really like the the price action early as far as looking for consolidation. So I didn't get my into my first one until about noon. Uh, I hit 20 and 40% on that. And then I'm just letting this, the remaining couple of contracts burn a little bit. It's currently trading at two bucks. I put a profit target in for a dollar. So I'll decide what to do with that here in a bit. I've got a second one on that I just put on a little bit ago. I have not hit any profit targets yet. But not too far away from 20%. I did some, I did a one, two DTE double calendar that's up a few percent. A couple percent. I did a I did a one DTE iron condor using the AM options, AM expirations tomorrow morning with the intent to transform it. And I transformed that into a downside vertical. So essentially would need an overnight gap down for that one to hit. Those options settle basically at the open. And then I did a 1DTE bullish VRR, which I turned into an upside vertical. So this expires tomorrow. So if we expire above 54.80, that would hit max. And then this is one, I did this bearish VRR yesterday. I meant to close it out before the end of the day to avoid CPI. And I completely forgot about it. So I I just, uh, when we had a little bit of a down move, I transformed that into a downside vertical, but that'll just be, looks like minimal profit. And that is it for me today. How about you, Chad? Yeah, pretty good day, really. I mean, I got in my first uh, AM Iron Condor at 9.30 Central, so... That would have been, so when I saw it drop, so it dropped at like 9... Let's see, what was that? I got in, um, let's see, 925. So it was sitting around 54.28 right in there. Um, pushed up a little bit, and then that drop really didn't affect me much because um, it had pushed up and then came back down. What was that? Um, I mean, that really just put me a little bit off center. And then, then the grind up, so grind back up into into right dead center, and then 
when you look at the grind up, like from about 940 Central on, it's really about 25 points. And so I had a 75 wide iron condor. So that pushed up to me like it just it didn't even was never even close to being stopped. Um, but when it when it got up to the very top there, I mean, I was well off centered, so I added one. And then on that flush, my AM2 got stopped. Um, what it ended up doing for my AM1 is just putting it right back to dead center. Um, so kind of unfortunate there with a uh, that stop on AM number two. So that was a full stop. Lunchtime number one. Put that on about 1220 Central. Uh, that was a 2040 16 out. And then I put on a power hour trade at the bottom of the hour here. I have booked 20. And it's getting a little off center with this push up. So I either need to pull back here or I'll be looking to add a power hour number two. So that's my day. Yeah, I could use a little pullback here. I was real close to 20% before this little last little push up. Yeah, I was getting close to 40%. NDX is trying to get back into the green. Yes, exactly. Discount VIX is definitely the weakest of the bunch today. No doubt. <laughs> what a collapse. Oh, I do have on a early and a late Rick. I just did a one lot on each of those. Just the upside profit is still not much, but let's see. So my, so I've got the 30 and 50 calls. Along with the 7510 puts. Oh, I'm sharing a strike. So it's not going to look right. But um, my early Rick is down a little bit, and my late Rick is up a little bit. So with the 1 2 DTE double calendar. So tomorrow morning, we, I mean, we've got retail sales and unemployment claims. I mean, those events don't necessarily scare me. So I think what I'll do is, so I've got a 10 lot. So I'm going to close out some of this by the end of the day. And then I'll let some ride overnight. SPX pushing. Need a pullback here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm... I just got stopped. So after 20% profit, so I won't add unless I can see this calm down. So my spread's trading at 770 and my stop's at 820. So any more tick up, it's going to get hit. Good afternoon, Jay Russell. How are you today? I'm actually going to close my late Rick right now. It's at about 25%. 
Leave the early one on, see if he can get out of my valley. SPX hasn't come close to sniffing either expected move up or down. There's about 36 points to start the day, plus or minus. I got to add my Rick at 1765. In at 1425, add it. Uh, Chessmaster, if you look at the, I kind of noted, I didn't really pay attention to this as much when we were looking at it, but after the market closed, when I was looking at it, if you look at those strikes, well, now it's, now it's not too bad. I don't remember what strikes I was looking at. And maybe it was just because the market was closed, but there was some, uh, there was some funky price prices on the bid ask very wide. So I have no idea where that thing was even trading at. You know, I was trying to get filled at 50 and then 55 cents and never got filled. So I can tell you, I did notice when I put on my power hour trade, I definitely noticed the short distance between the short strikes compared to what we've seen lately. I think it was 15 wide. Yeah, so oh, I did have I did have it saved. Yeah, those are 51 49 47 and a half. So it looks like it's trading for still trading for 57 cents. Keep in mind these options expire Friday. But that's if it's actually trading there. I have no idea that options in there are a little bit weird. A little bit wide. Well, I got a nice little pullback, safe from being stopped for the moment. Still need more to get back to center. Yeah, I just barely got stopped too, darn it. So here's the challenge now. The VIX being crushed. I mean, you're looking at a, a 10 wide with an 11 point expected move left. I don't trade that very often. Yeah, getting narrow. Still yeah, an hour to go. Right. Rolled up some puts in my Euro strangle today. So I've rolled down the calls and rolled up the puts now. Gold. Still in good shape. NASDAQ sitting on the unchanged level.
big movers in stocks. Peton is up 5%, or excuse me, down 5%. Plug down 5%. Google down 3 Coinbase down 2 On the green side, MU up 3.5%. CrowdStrike up 3.5%. DocuSign up 35 half. Home Depot had earnings before the bell. It's up two and a half. Netflix up two. I would appreciate about a five point move lower back down below 50. Yeah, I'd be more apt to get get in if I can see a pullback. Kind of looks like it wants to dip and rip though. I mean, for me to think about a power hour two, it's got to stay below 54, 56 or whatever that little push up was. Because if it pushes above that, it could just keep going. VIX, new lows of day. For anyone using Tradier, I just downloaded the new Tradier Pro platform. So if you haven't done that, <clears throat> probably a good idea. One of the one of our members in the calendar channel was having some issues with the TradeHawk. They rebranded it to Tradier Pro. I thought it was going to automatically update, but you actually have to download the new version. I got some FOMO going on right here, not being in a trade, but. Five or 10 wide doesn't. Yeah. Makes me a bit nervous. It's hard going from 60 to five. You're right. <laughs> No, I the only thing that you can do with Tradier with Trade Steward is you could you can bot equities. 
but you cannot trade SPX with bots on Tradier. So I just use my Tradier account for all my double calendars manually. Yeah, there was a, uh, they were getting ready to release the connection of Tradier to Trade Steward and then Tradier basically was like, oh no, you have to, you have to pay for that data. Whereas every other broker essentially pays for the data for SPX. So it's kind of at a stalemate as far as that goes, but they, they can do equities, just not the indices. Oh, got that down move. Now I need some decay. NASDAQ could not stay green. Did catch a nice downside volume runner in Tesla this morning. I think you got that one too, right, Chad? Chad must be taking a potty break. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, I caught that. That was, that was a beautiful one. Twenty percent profit target is at four bucks. Spreads trading at four forty, four fifty. Need it to just stay right here or go a little bit lower. All right, right there. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Did you jump in another one? Yeah, I I, I got in a power hour number two. Yeah, that's... Not what I was worried about. You're only 10 wide. Yeah, stop me out. That was uh pretty quick. Four minutes. 
I'm in nice range now, but it sure pumps some juice into my spread. Four minutes was all that took. Yeah, that was a nasty, nasty little drop. I was looking for a drop, but it and it came through my center and was close to hitting, but now it's back up to five bucks. Profit targets at four. Yeah, I didn't really see the 10 point move coming to the downside the way it was looking like it was going up. So, well, I was in the green till that trade. Need a hold. We get a little bounce, that premium is just going to get sucked out here. Elliot, did you do an early and a late Rick? Or do you just do the later one? Yeah, my uh I closed my late one for 24%. My early one is yeah, back in the red. Well, took the scenic route, but I'm right back to center. Well, glad you are. Again, that's that's three trades for me today that have just barely got stopped and then it reversed. Two were full stops and one was a after twenty, so it was a scratch trade. But yeah, I didn't see the 10 point move down coming. That's what, that's what I was I was just talking about how scared I was with the uh slim premiums, but don't know that I'll re-enter. Sure looked like it was heading towards highs of day there for a minute. Yep.
just need about a one point bounce and it'll hit my 20 percent Hmm. Didn't quite get there. Now it looks like it wants to go lower. Uh oh, Dick K is breaking out the fibs. What do you got for us, Dick K? I need a trend. I need a fib translation. All right, little bounce here. Little baby bounce. Now we need to bounce off your 618 retracement, Dick K. Can I get that from you? I know, I need a bounce off of it. Just a two-point bounce. If the 618's worth anything, it'll give me a two-point bounce. There we go. A little more. So here's something interesting. As I'm looking at my full stops the last couple of days, in the last two days, I've had three full stops that were just position sizing related minus 4,400, 4,500 and 4,450 in the whole month of July. I only had two that were over 4,000. Hmm. I've had, had three in the last two days. I know this has to deal with the longs for sure. So it's just something for me to keep an eye on there. May need to position size a little differently, but well, I guess the VIX is now back down to 16. So, yeah, I mean, I have to be something you worry about now. Fifteen cents away. Like I have two twenty, forty, sixty, and outs two full stops and a scratch trade that was $75 loss and I'm minus 3,500. So that's why it got me looking how my minus 3,500 when I've had two 60% winners and two full stops. And There's my so 20%. Just, 618 for the win, Dick K. I'm a believer. So 
Sorry, Chad, I cut you off. Ty's got a question about what you're we what you're saying. Yeah. So, hold on, hold on a second. Stones asked me something. Um, it just, my, my losses have been bigger with these big up moves because I, my puts lose value. And so I'm getting these bigger losses than normal with my position, same position size in terms Primarily of Primarily because your puts have costed more. So you're getting more decay on those long puts. Right. I'm pretty sure that's it. I mean, today they were. Let's see. On my full stops, they were. Well, that one was only twenty five cents. That was a thirty eight hundred loss. My 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 forty four fifty would have been my AM two. They were fifty cents. That's not bad. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm having almost a forty five hundred dollar full stop when normally it's like. Are you are you closing out your longs as you go? So in other words, if you do a ten lot, you get filled on five to close half. Do you close when the, five of your longs, or do you, do you wait? Yeah, till you're out of the entire. Well, thing? when the market's going up, I will close those puts out because they're losing value and they might still be like sixty cents. You know what I mean. Yeah, I just I wasn't sure if you waited till all ten lots were done. Yeah, no, no. I today I've today last couple of days I've closed those puts right away because it's been up moves that have the market's been up. So I don't know something I need to just watch. I think that's one reason I bring it up. It's just something that's been different with my PL last couple of days with Because norm normally, like, if I had two sixty percent outs and two full stops, I'm 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 should be sitting around a small red day, thousand bucks or under. But instead, I'm at minus thirty five hundred. So it's just something I need to probably pay a little more attention to. I would to. say some of that might also be the value that you gained from those longs that you held that you may have booked profits on. Yeah, it could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you had a, you know, depending on the day, if there's a decent sized move. Definitely holding its premium after the uh, a little down move. Yeah, is there anything tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, as far as economic reports? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, so pre-market core retail sales and unemployment claims, which I think there's more weight on the unemployment claims data than normal just because of because we're getting so close to the fed potentially lowering rates but i don't know that's just a just a guess my double calendar liked it better when we were up a little bit Thirty minutes till the bell. Still got a lot of juice left in this spread. Oh. 
<laughs> now it kind of looks like it wants to come down. Still get five wide. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to enter another power hour trade. It's just the setup and the price just isn't. Or a juicy $8 straddle. I mean, I could totally see this move. I could see this falling down to lows of day. Of course, you know, I thought I was going to go to highs of day here about 20 minutes ago. These these are tough power hours when you have thin premiums and you're still getting ten point moves. I lowered my profit target on my first one on the last tranche to seventy five cents. It's just about to hit it. You know that second red down bar is when I entered. I I kind of envisioned it chopping from there, and I, that's why I just entered. We can bounce off that 618 again. I hit my 40% Dick K. See if the 618 can get me a double win. Yeah, I'm heading lower. Yeah, sure that's that, why. That's why. That's why I didn't enter in another one. Sure, that move made the uh, at the money butterflies cheap as well. At the money butterfly, oh, it's trading for over a dollar. Well, you guys. Uh... Good luck with your Magic Mahomes. I'm going to run stone to football because I'm just not trusting this price movement with a five wide or a straddle. So don't want to put on any more risk. Yep. I don't blame you. I will see everybody tomorrow morning. Have a good one. All righty. See ya. Twenty-five minutes to the bell. Fifteen minutes until MOC. S and P still green by eight points. Dow still up two hundred. Nasdaq and Russell red.
40% profit targets at $3, currently trading at about $350. Little bounce would hit it. There it is, gravy from here. Elliot, how's your day? I haven't, I kind of just skimmed over what you mentioned you were doing with the different verticals. How's that going today? Plan to check that out a little bit tonight. More detail. So are you, are you doing all those tranches? I think it, what was it like nine tranches a day? Gotcha. So when you enter those in Trade Steward, are you targeting that specific price to get filled at to make the the probabilities work? Or are you just, or is it just specifically firing at those exact times? No minimum. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, check out Scroll Above Cosmo. It was posted earlier. Along with a bunch of commentary about it. So we got MOC in about 10 and a half minutes. I'm going to hold this last tranche until MOC. I don't get stopped on it. Oh, yeah, the 618's paying me. Got me 20 and 40%, Dick K. I'm a believer. Set my profit target at a dollar. Either filled for a dollar, I'll get stopped out, or I'll close right before MOC. Forty-five butterfly trading for a buck ten, buck fifteen.
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close some of my one two DTE. All right, so close six of my 10. One, two, DTE double calendar, just posted that, just scratched it. And I'll hold the uh, hold the remaining overnight. Just hoping to book some profits same day, but just lightening up for overnight. A little bounce now. Right back to center. All right. Sorry about that. I had to grab some water. I'm going to see in four minutes, my spread's trading at a dollar or 65. The 50 butterfly looks like it's trading for a dollar forty.
Yeah, definitely showing a little higher prices than we've seen in a while. With 13 minutes to go. Just need to need to stay calm for another five to seven minutes. Everybody be cool. Everybody stay calm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of this so I can do my, my Mahomes. One minute till MOC. All right, out for a dollar sixty on my last three contracts. No, oh, two of them filled. And the last one for $1.85. All right. <clears throat> Time for Mr. Mahomes. $1.4 billion sell side. All right, we're looking at 50 and a 45. Yeah, uh, Mukesh, I thought there was, at, at one point, I thought there was something to credit spread verticals filling a little bit faster than debit spreads, but it was just coincidental. And I just, my, I set my template up this way, so I just have continued to do it that way. Sitting on the 50. Looks like the fifties are trading for maybe a dollar seventy.
sitting on 50. Let's get a fill. Let's get a fill, Phil. Seven minutes to go. NASDAQ trying to go green again. All you need is a five point move, Makesh. So, after you get filled, all you need is a five point move. So, the previous price action is not that great of an indication of whether it'll be a winner or not. <clears throat> We've had a 15 point range in the last 30 minutes. So, VIX, new lows of day, pushing up towards 55, put in a 55 fly. Oh, wow. Got a 60 fly in. It's pushing to 60. We need this price movement after we get filled. Just move 10 points. Sitting at 59. Uh, Ty, get it on financialjuice.com. The free version, it's going to be a little bit delayed. The pro version is real time. Sixties are close to filling. Three minutes to go. Build on the fifty fives. All right, got uh, two and a half minutes. Lando filled on the 60s, nice.
Okay, so some on the 60s. I got filled on the 55s. I got filled on the 55 put fly. Another little push, and I'll get locked. Well, it looked nice on the 60s for a minute. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to get locked as it moved down. Partial fill on my vertical. Locked. Locked and loaded. One minute to go. Now I would and I would enjoy a ten point down move. Ten point down move down to fifty. That'd be beautiful. That'd be good for twelve k. Well, seven points in 30 seconds. We can do that. At least get down below 55 for my 60, folks. It's getting close. Getting close. You guys might be close to locking. That's seven seconds. Oh, 60's locked too. There you go. Oh, yeah. More than minimum profit, baby. Oh, bad markup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> teased me. It teased me with a uh, close at 53 and then it bounced right back to 55. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was getting more than minimum profit. But Close right back above 55, so still a winner. <laughs> oh, I get I get rowdy at the craps table, Dick K. I was playing craps on the uh, cruise casino. Yeah, it got loud. <laughs> I rolled. I had about a 45-minute roll. So when I'm rolling, it's even worse. All right, all. Uh, good day. Good day. Tomorrow's live stream chat will be streaming live in the morning for Mighty 90 and Runners. And uh, we'll be back for Power Hour tomorrow. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night. Cheers.